Hi. Just before the audio starts, I wanted to let you know that I have a Patreon with a bunch of exclusive audios, access to a Discord where you could talk to me and a bunch of other lovely people, and weekly polls to decide what Friday's audio will be. If any of that interests you, there's a link in the description. There's also going to be a brand new Patreon exclusive audio when this goes up. I don't know what it is because I haven't recorded it yet, <laughs> but it will be there. So if any of that interests you, there's a link in the description. If not, that is perfectly fine. And without further delay, enjoy the audio. Um, setting, uh, hang on, there we go, uh, alright, well, I meant for this to be a, a bit of a surprise, but, I guess that's out the window, <laughs> yeah, um, I got off my shift early. Yeah, they, uh, they didn't need me, so I was able to get off work, and... Well, you know, we've been wanting to go on some sort of date for a little bit, ever since a few days ago. And I figured with the kiddo back there, kind of keeping both of us occupied, why not just bring the date to us? <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've been home for a few minutes. Yeah, like 40. <laughs> I've been trying to stay really quiet so you wouldn't hear me. Yeah, I, um, I made spaghetti. And, uh, yeah. I don't know, is, is the music too much? <laughs> I thought it was a nice touch, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> if it's too much, I, I could always turn it off, but, you know. Okay, okay, <laughs> just checking. But yeah, um, also, I, I wanted to say, it's, um, it's okay if what was done and said the other night was too much too fast, you know? I know that it's usually best for relationships to go slow, you know? It's it's good for, like, stuff to build, and, you know, like, I know you fairly well at this point. I mean, you babysat my daughter a lot, and we've talked a lot, but, you know, I, I don't really know you, you know, and it's weird, because, like, a part of me wants to take this slow, but a part of me is, like, really, really into you, and kind of wants to jump into all the relationship stuff, but, you know, that's not usually what makes a lasting relationship, so kind of a bad idea, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we'll just have to figure it out, I guess. But again, if if anything was done the other night that may have been a little too much too quick for you, no worry, because I, I know emotions were flying high and you know, it was just the atmosphere and everything, so. If it was a bit too much, there is nothing wrong with that. You're positive. You promised me it wasn't too much. 
Really? Okay. I'm just checking. I'm, I'm just checking. Because you never know. I know mo emotions in the moment don't usually represent emotions that exist as a constant, you know? <laughs> so, uh, if you're not busy, I mean, we've got a big old plate of spaghetti here. I would have gotten two plates of spaghetti, but um, I haven't done the dishes in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a little bad about that. <laughs> but anyway, we have one clean plate. It's a big one, so it works. Totally didn't purposefully not do the dishes to try and conjure the atmosphere for a Lady in the Tramp type moment. <laughs> Yeah, the noodles probably aren't long enough for that anyway. <laughs> yeah, I do the thing where I am. Um, don't tell the Italians, but I, I do the thing where I, I break the noodles in half and then boil them. Look, okay, I would do the thing where I boil them when they're as long as possible. I would love to. I love long noodles. But I don't have a big enough pot. <laughs> they're going to stick out. And like half of them are going to be boiling while half of them aren't. And then I'm gonna have to mix them up, and then I'm gonna have to wait even longer for the rest of them to boil. It's gonna be, ugh. It's just the laborious process, okay? I need to break them because my pot isn't big enough. It's not my fault, okay? It's not my fault. I don't wanna upset the Italians. <laughs> but, you know, the prices. I don't really know where I was going with that sentence. The price? The frick? The sacrifices have to be made. I don't know why my brain went to price. The sacrifices. Sacrifices have to be made. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> How's the spaghetti look? Does it look appetizing? Yeah. I worked, uh... I mean, not too hard on it. I mean, all I did was, you know, cook some beef, get some prego boil noodles and then just kind of put them all in, <laughs> into the pot after I drained all the the grease from the beef. It's pretty simple. It's pretty dang simple. But yeah. <laughs> this isn't awkward, right? You don't have anywhere to be. Right? I'm, not, I'm not like holding you up or like making you feel obligated to like talk to me or whatever, right? You're sure? Okay, I'm, I'm, alright. Because I know with this sob story I told you, I can seem a bit sad, and my buddies, you know, they, they take pity on me for everything that's gone on. They're like, hey, we found this girl who, like, really likes kids, and blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, that's not the only criteria I need. <laughs> like, obviously, I want you to love my daughter, but, like, <laughs> I, I need a bit more, you know? Because, like, they're all like, you know, oh, I'd love to be a stay-at-home mom, and I'm like, I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I'm not really into that. <laughs> I want you to have your own passions, you know, like. I mean, hey, I'm not saying if you want to be a stay-at-home mom, there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely not. No. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom, that's fine. That's 100% okay. But, you know, I I want the girl I date to have passions too. You know, like, I want her to be a person, you know, because I've never understood people with, like, quote-unquote trophy wives. You know, it, it, it drives me crazy because, like, in my opinion, the best relationship stems from someone who's your best friend, right? You can have conversations about literally anything and find interesting stuff to talk about. It's why, like... Okay. <laughs> Little lore drop on me. I enjoy comedy specials. Yeah, I, I enjoy comedians. Like, um... Right, I don't know if you're very into comedians, but uh, my top few comedians... We'll just get that out of the way. <laughs> I love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's my number one. Dave Chappelle is freaking genius. I love Dave Chappelle. God, he's... And I know, I know, 
as a person who, you know, is an ally of all the LGBTQ stuff, it might be like, oh, you, you support Dave Chappelle? It's like, I, I know that he's a part of the whole, well, there's a lot of controversy surrounding him with the whole, like, you know, closer special, like, he's transphobic, or like, to me, if you watch it, you get a different sense, you know? You get a very, he's not transphobic is the thing. He's, he's not. He's just an artist, and he's he's the type of person who will not hold back his jokes for anyone. If he finds, like, you know, he said this in a previous comedy special, the only reason he makes fun of anyone is because he sees himself, himself in them. And I love that. Like, I feel like so many people who say, oh, Dave Chappelle doesn't support uh, transgenders, I'm just like... You're removing artistic nuance from his words. You're taking his jokes out of context. And like, did you watch The Closer? <laughs> did you see the last bit he had about his friend Daphne? Like, that man does not hate transgender people. He's just like, poking fun. It's just like, you know, like if, if you get jokes made about you from the legendary Dave Chappelle, I would take that in strides because that man does not have an ounce of hate in his body. I am convinced. Dave Chappelle, like, uh, he's, he's like the best comedian to ever live, in my opinion. He's so, ugh, I love him. And like, if you really think he's transgender, he's transphobic from his comedy specials, like watch his special on Netflix called What Is In A Name? And in that special, it's literally an acceptance speech for his old high school naming a theater after him. And he goes on this long diatribe that, that that acceptance speech alone is a masterpiece, honestly, in my eyes. But at the very end, he says that because of the controversy, if people were to walk into the theater and feel oppressed by his name being there, that was, quote, untenable to him. And he decided instead name the theater that was going to be the Dave Chappelle Theater the theater of artistic freedom and expression and I'm just like dude <laughs> that is such a cool move like the amount of like reins on your ego you would have to have in order to be like I disagree with everything that's being said about me, but I still don't want that to... Like, I know so many celebrities that would be like, yeah, name the theater after me, show these people who disagree with me that they're wrong. He's like, no, no, I don't want people who pursue art to feel oppressed by my name. So we're gonna rein it back. And then he said, like, once you guys are ready, once you guys kind of adapt to the whole thing, you can put my name right on the top of it. I'm just like, what a genius. Oh, God, I love Dave Chappelle. I love him so much. Uh, his is so weird. Like some of his comedy specials, he doesn't even tell that many jokes, but I still am just so enveloped by it. I love him. He's a fantastic comedian. Sorry, <laughs> I went on a bit of a rant. Oh, you, oh, you enjoy that? Well, I appreciate that. I will say, I, I've always wanted a, a significant other that would love to just sit there and listen to me go off on one about whatever I'm obsessed with at the time. And the same thing with her. So, um, I gotta say, you're, uh, continuing to check off quite a few boxes. You're doing quite well so far. <laughs> I'm impressed. Your resume is quite impressive. <laughs> um, alright, my other favorite comedians. This one's gonna sound weird, but stay with me. Randy Feldface. <laughs> now, I'm sure you've never heard of him, but Randy Feldface is a puppet. <laughs> Hear me out. He's a puppet. Every comedy special he does, he uses a, a felt puppet, right? He doesn't have that many. He doesn't have the many comedy specials. He's not super well-known, but he did he did do a one recently that where he sold out a theater, which is pretty cool. You know, he's got some weight behind him, but like, he's a very well-read comedian, and like, he's he's clearly very intelligent, and like, he's <laughs> the way he uses the puppet a is hilarious, like to really accentuate certain emotions and stuff. It's 
absolutely hilarious. But B, every now and then he brings forth these deeper ideas. Like in my favorite comedy special of his, he really addresses like what it means to like, you know, write literature and like what it means to like be overtaken by your work. Does making fantastic pieces of literature overtake how much of a crappy person you can be? And he used the example of Oh god, I'm forgetting his name. What was his name? Oh no 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 no, what was his name? What was his name? No, 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 what was it? Oh, God. I'm... Uh, ignore me. Not, no, I'm not using my phone. Shush. <laughs> uh, crap. Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway. That was it. I'm pretty sure. E yes. Yes, Ernest Hemingway. That's his name. Yeah. You know, Ernest Hemingway. Fantastic writer. He's made some incredible books, right? But... Randy went through the life and times of Ernest Hemingway in like this fantastic bit that's on YouTube that I would recommend looking up later, where he just like goes through the entirety of his life, and dude was kind of insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was kind of a dirtbag a little bit. <laughs> oh my god, I, I can't even run through it all. You're just gonna have to watch the video because holy crap, there's so much. But he goes on this, like, interesting, like, conversation of, like, what it means to be an artist. And, like, it's so interesting. And it's really... I love comedy specials that get really introspective, you know? And, like, get really interesting with how... It's the reason I love Bo Burnham's Inside so much. Like, you know, I, I don't really consider that as a comedy special. I consider it more of, like just art really because <laughs> I don't really think it fits the moniker of a comedy special but I mean like that thing is a masterpiece like holy crap and <laughs> if you haven't seen it don't watch it if you're in a bad place right now like if you're a little depressed right now do not watch that because holy hell is it depressing <laughs> <sighs> but yeah my top two Dave Chappelle Randy Feldface and Gabriel Iglesias Gabriel Iglesias is just funny. <laughs> There's no, no other way around it. He's not as deep or introspective. Every now and then he's a little bit of something, but like he's just a funny dude. He's very funny. He's very sweet, too. But yeah, <laughs> thank you for listening to my rant up comedians. I enjoy stand-up comedy. I think it's really interesting. I've always thought I might be good at it. Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever have the balls to try it, but I'm... I don't know if you've noticed this. I'm weird. <laughs> I'm a very weird person. Um, <laughs> I am terrible in social situations, but in terms of, like, performing, I'm great. Like, I am in college for the year I went before, you know, I got my girlfriend at the time pregnant and got into this situation. Uh, I was in the improv group at my college yeah and um I really enjoyed it I was pretty good all things considered I mean I don't want to toot my own horn too much but that's pretty good <laughs> that was pretty good and I don't know like I'm just terrible in social situations but when it comes to like performing to like be funny or you know act for like a, a video that like of videos I made back in high school because I was in the the video program yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, like, you know, doing that back then, like, I would lose all sense of dignity. I'd be like, okay, what do you need me to do? And they'd tell me, and I'd be like, got it. And I'll just freaking do it. And they'll be like, Jesus, dude, you did not have to go that hard. But I'm like, day, I live for the role, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do think there's a artist in me that really wants to get out you know my life isn't to be spent in an amazon warehouse carrying boxes forever <laughs> screw that i have enough back pain yeah <laughs> you know like there's a lot of things i want in life and it's weird because so many people have said like you know i 
have such like no vision of like where I want to go in life and that's fine you know like I've always thought the idea of like asking kids like what do you want to be when you grow up is stupid you know because like when you're a kid you don't know you don't know what you want to be you have no clue but like you know it's just like you know let it happen like it's okay like you know there are people who didn't have a good job till they were in like their 30s who didn't get happily married till they're in their 30s like you know there's this fantastic uh, quote I saw somewhere, I can't remember where, it may have been on uh, a very nice tweet. <laughs> yeah, I know, that takes some validity out of the quote because it's a tweet, but hear me out. <laughs> it was like, you're not early to do something, you're not late to do something, like get a job or find a girlfriend. You're on time for you. And I was like, that's... that really hit, you know? Because, you know, I was kind of late to the whole dating game. Yeah, the, <laughs> the first woman I was ever actually dating, I ended up marrying and then getting divorced. <laughs> it was a freaking mess. And I also had a kid with her. <laughs> so it was a whole thing. Yeah, we moved kind of fast. <laughs> In hindsight, that was a bit quick. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, it's like, Take your own time with life, you know, there's no rush. Like, odds are you're gonna live to, like, at least 80. Which, like, ugh, I don't wanna get old. <laughs> I'm not, so I don't have to worry about that for a minute, but... Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, everyone's always been like, you know, I don't know what I'm, you know, aiming for in life, you know, I'm just kind of figuring it out. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. For me, ever since, like, I was a kid, and I wrote, like, I think this started when I wrote a story for a literature class in middle school, I was like, enamored with storytelling. And it was just so interesting to me. I loved it. It was so captivating. Like any kind of story in literature and movies, you know, back when I was a kid I was really into like you know I was like I want to be a director but like you know my trajectory for what I want to be in life has shifted a lot sure but I still want to make stories I want to make art you know I want to create stories that captivate people and ensnare them in this world that is beyond their wildest imagination envelop them in these complex characters that change and morph throughout the story and become better towards the end or worse depending on what kind of story i want to tell who knows but like i just love stories i love storytelling i love art love it it's so oh i love it so much i do and you know i've explored a lot of artistic mediums but you know, as i mentioned the other night I'm kind of into the whole video game sphere right now I haven't made a video game yet, you know, I haven't really played around on much, but I have Godot on my PC, so, you know, so maybe I'll look up a few videos and try to program something simple, like, I don't know, maybe make a, <laughs> you know Markiplier, you know how occasionally he'll do three scary games, <laughs> make something like on itch.io, itch.io, that would like end up in a Mark three scary games video. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, you know, something simple, something quick. Something where, like, you know, I wouldn't have to model that much, or I could keep it simple, you know? <laughs> you know, something like that, you know. Horror has always enamored me in video games, because, like, I've never been a huge fan of horror movies, you know? I get that a lot of people like it, but to me it's just, like, yeah, like, it, it loses a bit of the whole, like, narrative pull, you know? Because, like, the main purpose is to just scare you, you know? And I don't like that. <laughs> like, some of them straddle it really well. Like, um, one of the few horror movies that I've actually seen and liked was, uh, Nope. <laughs> yeah, by, um, Jordan Peele. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. You know, from Key and Peele. He surprisingly is a very good horror movie filmmaker. <laughs> but I, I liked it because it, it straddled this line of, like, you know, a very interesting horror movie. And, like, you know, it really wasn't that scary, but, like, such an interesting concept and, like, you know, this commentary that, like, 
you know, drapes the entire film. It's very elegantly handled, and I like it. It's a cool movie. But, like, I've always thought the horror genre really peaks in video games, you know? Because, like, this, like, um... <laughs> I'll try not to go on a rant, but there's this game called Subnautica that I adore. I love this game so much. I don't know how many video games you've played, but... Um... I love Subnautica so much. Oh, it's one of my favorite games. Oh my god, okay. I, sorry. <laughs> I'll give you an overall view. Essentially, in Subnautica, you get stranded on this alien world that's like 99.9% .9 ocean, right? And there's a bunch of alien fish in it, and you gotta survive. It's it's kind of like... It's a survival game, kind of like Minecraft. But um, very different, obviously, because it's an ocean. And, like, you know, you gotta scavenge for resources and all that, explore, go deeper, figure out, like, the mysteries of the world. But it's surprisingly, like, the devs didn't even intend this, but, like, it kind of turned into this. It can be so scary. It can be, like, literally, oh, man, it gives me so, so much anxiety sometimes because there's big old fish in the game. Like, literally fish that would make the biggest animal in the world, the blue whale, look shrimpy. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So big. So very big. <laughs> and like, literally, anytime I'm around something like that, I'm just like, oh, frick, oh god, oh god. Because <laughs> I, I legit get scared. Because, oh, it's such a good game. And it's so legitimately scary. And it's because it's it like types, taps into that survival instinct, you know? And like, you can't really do that in films. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a solely video game type thing because you can get so enveloped and just, like, it takes your attention and just really immerses you in the game, you know? It's one of the reasons why I love video games so much. There's such a... It's such a wild west of storytelling, you know what I mean? Like, there's no rules and, like, there's nothing you have to do. Like, you... Like, it's such a wide and wide-open medium. I find it so interesting. Yeah, it's, it's why I want to make games one day. We'll make a game. We have a plan. But plan for one, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I, I could totally tell you about it sometime, but... It's, uh... It's getting a little late. I mean, I don't want to keep you here too long. No, no, you, yeah. Yeah, you can go back to your apartment. It, it, it's fine. Yeah, I don't want to keep you here too long. Hey, hey, it's it's okay. You don't have to stay. Yeah, you know, we both finished the meal. And I will say, this was really nice. I know I did a lot of the talking. I'm sorry. You, you enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. I, I know I did a lot of the talking. You know, I wanted to get to know you, but I guess I'm just very good at blabbing. <laughs> but I would love to do this again sometime and like really invest a lot of time into this. I want to get to know you more. Because I am very interested in who you are. And what you have to offer as a romantic partner. Because you seem very wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so... I guess this is, uh, goodbye for now. <laughs> Can't wait to do something like this again. <laughs> Little goodbye kiss. <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>